Hello YouTube, Captain Mac here and welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. That's right ladies and gentlemen, it is finally here. As of the recording of this video, today is the release date. <clears throat> I have spent probably half the day trying to familiarize myself with the sim a little bit. Uh, I will say this, it looks absolutely stunning. It really does. Uh, based on my computer with the new graphics card, which is the uh, RTX 2070. Hold on. <coughs> There's your first cough in your face for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, you made it. <laughs> anyway, uh, based on my computer specs, it recommended... Uh, high settings or high performance or something like that uh, the one right below ultra so I don't have ultra settings on but even uh, with these settings it looks absolutely stunning I mean I'm just beyond impressed with how it looks that being said I am not so impressed with the user interface trying to do certain things uh, is not very intuitive at all uh, for example uh, from you may remember from uh, FSX, you would hit uh, just Control J, and that would move the jetway. And it's supposed to be the same here, but it didn't work. Um, I hit Shift plus one, uh, Shift plus E, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, all just to get two doors to open. And then the jetway decided to connect itself. Uh, so that was nice. At least we do have the jetway connected. The cameras are very unuser friendly, in my opinion. Um, there are some nice features to the cameras, the fact that I can uh, simply click and move around, which is nice, and that's the same inside and so on. Um, and you'll see that when we get on the flight deck. Uh, so there are certainly some aspects uh, that are great. I do look forward to hopefully Chase Plane putting out a version for this simulator because you're supposed to be able to uh, preset certain camera positions, and I can't get it to work. And I've gone into the control settings probably three dozen times uh, this morning and looked at what it says you're supposed to do. And it's, again, it's not intuitive. It doesn't say do this to save a new setting. Um, I'm guessing on which function actually saves the setting. And then I try to save a setting and it just doesn't work. It just flat out doesn't work. <laughs> so a little frustrating there. Um, I think the graphic user interface needs a lot of work on this flight simulator or at least some good fine tuning that's just my opinion on it um, some of you may like it very much I just happen to not like it very much at all <laughs> uh, but that's alright it is what it is uh, the simulator however does look absolutely amazing it runs quite smooth um, I have AI traffic set to real world so any aircraft that you see in the sim should be uh, real world flights. Now there are no liveries of any sort. Uh, just some different colors and that pretty much sums it up. This is the San Francisco airport that uh, has been done up nice and pretty, if you will, by Microsoft. And they did an absolutely stunning job on it. Uh, I would love to... Uh, like go up with my camera so that I could show you a nice overview uh, but the best I can do is zoom out and of course when you do that you get that fish eye look so I don't really care for that but the airport looks really absolutely fantastic it really does it looks very good uh, maybe if I go to this showcase maybe I can go up here now see so the the function that I use to go up uh, doesn't work here <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, the, the cameras are my biggest frustration right now, to be honest with you. Um, definitely cameras are my biggest frustration. So enough complaining about that. The fact is, is uh, it does look absolutely stunning. This is a default 787. We're going to fly from here, as you know, today. This, this flight, by the way, in case you forgot, you guys chose it. So this is the very first flight that I am doing in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, and it was chosen by you, ladies and gentlemen, is the 787-10 from Boeing, of course, uh, and it is going to be from San Francisco to London Heathrow, so a nice long flight. Now, uh, I already did the flight plan in the base flight planner, not that it's going to make any difference because we got to put everything in anyway, but I do want to say... Um, 
the flight planning tool, the default flight planning tool is, is pretty great actually, far better than what we've seen in the past. Uh, the default aircraft is certainly better than default aircraft of old, but this is not a quality wing 787 by any means. And you're going to see what I'm talking about when we dive in here. Um, but all in all, so far, um, I'm really liking this sim. I have done no actual flying. I mean, I've flown around a little bit, um, but no real flying as far as my profile is concerned. I have zero time right now. And I'll go into showing you guys what my profile is and all that at some point. Now, the one issue I'm running into that's driving me a little cuckoo right now is I can't get ATC to come up. I set a key to it, and it, it doesn't do anything. Uh, there's supposed to be an ATC window popping up. And nothing I, nothing I push makes it pop up. I don't know how to make it pop up. And there is no tutorial of any sort on how to use functions in this simulator. So it's kind of a learn as you go. And so that's kind of how it's going to be. And so I'm going to ask you all to bear with me as I try to pick my way through this new sim. Eventually we will certainly get quite familiar with it. And we shouldn't have any real issues. Um, until we see some real quality add-on aircraft we are going to fly mostly VFR in this sim and I've got a whole series all planned out that I think you guys are gonna love and I already started on it in the old sims and I'm looking forward to continuing it in this one as well so without further ado enough talking out here what do you say we climb on the flight deck take a look around see what we got going on get a little more used to our user interface and get this aircraft started and on the way Alrighty folks, welcome to the flight deck. As I mentioned, um, the cameras are an issue and you're going to see that as we go through here. Also, uh, this is a default aircraft. So while it is far better than what we've dealt with for default aircraft in the past, it is still very much a default aircraft and you're going to see what I'm talking about here pretty soon. There is a built-in checklist feature that is uh, apparently applicable to all aircraft. And you can pop it up using your little uh, menu up here. Just click on this guy. And uh, we've got three different items on our checklist. The before starting the engine. And you can go through these here and tick them off one at a time. And then the engine start and then the after engine start. And I don't know if it goes beyond that because I haven't really gone beyond that myself. Right? So... Let's go ahead and let's just put that out of the way for the moment. And what do you say we start by taking a look at our plan for the day? Now, Sim Toolkit Pro has been updated to function with uh, the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. If we go to our live map here and go to controls, let's just make sure we're, we're on follow me. And there you go, you can see we are at San Francisco. That's our gate right there. And it is functioning oh excuse me I just had a hiccup there now the flight plan is going to be interesting because the nav data another hiccup for you the nav data for Microsoft Flight Simulator is an older nav data set and I am this flight plan was created with a new nav data set uh, the current AIRAC cycle in fact so I'm not sure how that's gonna work yet again I haven't really done anything yet but let's take a look at the flight plan here San Francisco out to Heathrow it's uh, air distance of 4,746 nautical miles. Boy, we went big on our first shot, didn't we? <laughs> you can see this is going to be Mac Flight 0001. That's right, first flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Good stuff. Uh, trip fuel 122,217 pounds. I just realized I set the fuel wrong. That's all right, because that's going to give us an opportunity to take a look at it here in a minute. Uh, final reserve 4,741. Uh, with a block fuel of 141,695 pounds, and now just, yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check my math on this real quick because you can't. It's, it's weird. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's weird how it works. So 141,695 divided by two is uh, 70,847. So we're gonna need that number. You'll see why here in a minute. So 70,847. Okay, I wrote that down. All right, uh, let's take a look at our payload down here. 
383 packs on board, no cargo, total payload of 88,100 pounds. Zero fuel weight should be 389,300 pounds with a takeoff weight of 529,900 pounds and a landing weight of 407,700 pounds. Now, I do have real world weather turned on. How accurate it is, I honestly have no idea. We're going to find out. If we look at our uh, charts here real quick, there's the basics of the route, pretty straightforward, uh, up across uh, the western part of the U.S., up over through Canada, across the Atlantic, and then on into uh, England. Now let's take a look, uh, what was our, I didn't even look at our altitude, 370 is what we're looking at. Uh, so that's 300, this would be 34 probably, yep, and then 39. So if the real world weather that uh, was used for the flight plan matches up with the real world weather that is used in FSX, then this is about what we should see for our winds. Starting with a tailwind, uh, working its way into a crosswind that looks like it's kind of switching back and forth, and then back into it. The winds are just kind of all over the place for this entire route, actually. It's pretty crazy looking winds here, so just something to keep in mind. Uh, the weather display, what's the right word for it here? Um, the way the weather looks, the clouds and stuff in this flight simulator is just astounding. And I'm sure you've all seen some videos on that. Uh, so we should get a little bit of a look at that as we're getting up through here. Um, but when we get over to our approach here, we may have some uh, significant weather there. Definitely going to have some turbulence. We're going to see what happens. So that's kind of the plan of the day there. Again, here's our waypoints, the whole list here. I don't know how this is going to play out in the sim. We're going to find out here in a couple of minutes. So let's get this back out of the way here and let's push on. Alright, so let's talk about this fuel really quick. If you go up to your little drop down menu, click on this guy, you get your fuel and your payload right here. Okay, now, uh, my fuel's uneven anyway. We need 70,847 pounds per side. I don't know if this holds that much, but one thing that's nice here is I can click on that and just delete it. Just using my keyboard. So 70,847, they did a good job with this. 70,847. So the max is 67,951. You see the air aircraft rocking back and forth. Now you can also request fuel. Um, let's just max this out. So I'll just put the same thing, 7847. And so we should end up with the same number. Yep, so 67,951. So I got to do the math on this now, right? Because I don't do math very well in my head. So I've got a calculator ready to go here. So 67,951. 951 times 2 is 135,902 and I need uh, let's see we need uh, 141,695 141,695 so we still need another basically 5,800 pounds of fuel so in the center tank here I'm gonna put 5,800 pounds of fuel now I don't know how accurate this is gonna be alright uh, I said 5,800, not 4,800. Let's try that again. There we go. 5,800 pounds of fuel. So there's our fuel. All right. Now the payload is supposed to be total payload of 88,100 pounds. It just shows 26% on here. You see what you end up with here, right? So you've got all the different weights. Now I don't have it broken down by weights on my flight plan over here I've just got the totals right so you got the total number of packs and so on and so forth so I'm just gonna leave the payload the way it is uh, I will say this um, we're we're nowhere near a max on our flight plan and certainly nowhere near a max in here so I think we're just fine so I'm gonna leave it the way it is and that's what we're gonna go with so that puts our fuel in our payload about where we want them and we can start taking a look at getting the aircraft set up for the flight now this is where the where the cameras start driving me absolutely cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, it's hard to get a nice overhead view here. I can get one if I set up like this and slide over and then we can rotate up and zoom out and we're good to go. So it's going to be a little slower going from view to view because we're going to have to do stuff like that. All right. So let's just go right on down here going down our panels and we're not being strict with the checklist because there are a lot of things that don't work on this aircraft and you're going to kind of see that as we go along. But our IRS alignment has already begun and as a matter of fact um, if we go down here let's see if I can even get a view that works for it. See that's it, that goes up not forward. 
that doesn't go anywhere. I don't even know which view is supposed to go, f which moves us forward. Uh, uh, this is, yeah, this is just crazy frustrating. So there's one, there we go, that'll work for us. Okay, so that was control, left control three, and it has to be the left control, not the right control. So you can see uh, the nav data, it says nav dat 42, uh, says August 13th to September 9th, 2020. So it should be applicable. Um, I'm assuming that that nav data is not from Navigraph, but from a different nav data source, because Navigraph, nav, Navigraph uses the ARAC cycle uh, designator. So I don't know what that designator is. I've never seen that before. But let's do our position initialization real quick. So reference airport is going to be KSFO. Now, one thing I do appreciate is that it's a somewhat, what do you mean not in database? Did I miss a KS, no, not KF, KS, that's why, KSFO, there we go, that'll be in the database. Um, it is a somewhat, I don't want to say fully functioning FMS, but it does have quite a bit of function, especially considering that it's a default aircraft. So there's something to be said for that. Now you see we've got no positions on page two. We're just gonna have to grab our GPS position here, put it in there just like you would normally do uh, an IRS alignment. Now if we go to route, it does have our route in there because we use the flight planner. Okay, so here's the way this is. Because I use the flight planner, I can go with the route as it's set up in here. And I chose this departure using uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator Flight Planner, which by the way, there will be a tutorial on that. It's simple to use, but there will be a tutorial. Uh, but these waypoints are different than ours. So what we've got, um, <laughs> that's so frustrating. Okay, let me switch over here. Here we go. So we're supposed to go, let's see, we got Santana to Orca, then to FMG, which we don't have FMG there. We got Mead instead. Uh, we're not doing BOI. We're supposed to be on J32 here and so on. So I'm going to stick with the flight plan that's, uh, I'm going to stick with the flight plan that FSX, or FSX, that Microsoft Flight Simulator has provided for us. But you should be able to put in your flight plan just like you would any other time, right? So if we wanted to change our departure, we're set for Santana 2, and it doesn't look like it's going to let us actually pick anything else. So you, the FM, this FMS, FMC is going to be limited. That's just all there is to it. So let's go back to our route and then our performance initialization. You can see just about everything's filled out here except for our cost index. So we're going to put that in there. And then we're not going up to 410. We're going up to 370. Uh, and that's what we're going to stick with for now. And then just like you would normally do, you go to your takeoff page. It's uh, suggesting takeoff one and climb one. I think I'm good with that. So we're going to execute. I forgot to do that anyway. And then and then you have your v-speeds are in there and that's it now this is our first flight I've got a lot to learn about how the sim itself functions but there is a slope to the runway right um, and you should be able to when we get more advanced aircraft you should be able to put it in let me just pull up the flight plan on Navigraph real quick because I forgot to <laughs> wouldn't you know I gotta sign into Navigraph big surprise there right <laughs> so let me sign into Navigraph goodness gracious there's that and then let me click remember me again for about the millionth time <clears throat> there we go now just grab my flight plan real quick and then charts list airport info got that and then our standard instrument departure is the Santana 2 <clears throat> so we'll pin that really quick <coughs> Excuse me. Now, runway slope information. I'm not sure. I've never had to look for it. What, where you find the slope for a runway? It's kind of interesting when you think about it. I'm gonna have to look into that because the runway slope is there. Unlike FSX and P3D, the runways are not flat in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is something I appreciate very, very much. But while I'm here, let's see, ATIS is going to be on 13.7. Let's see if we can listen to the ATIS. Oh, if I can even move my view here. Ugh. Oh, that goes up, down. I can go left and right, up and down, but I can't go forward and backward. 
which is driving me nuts because I can't figure out which keys go forward and backward. I don't even know what that key was. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's go down here. Let's go to VHF. And we want to be on 113.7. 3.7. Put that in the active, and it just it. <laughs> uh, goodness gracious. Okay, invalid entry, clear. Maybe because I because I put it there instead of standby. One one three. These are supposed to be current. Invalid. Why is that invalid? It's a VHF frequency for goodness sakes. One one three point seven. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you, uh, you can't do anything with this apparently. Maybe if I do it, maybe I got to do it up here. Let's try it. One one three point seven. Nothing. Not working. So I guess we can't listen to Atis. That's nav radio. I don't need that. Uh, menu. Weather. In uh, there are a lot of things that are inoperable on here. There's transponder. Okay. I'm done messing with it already. I really am. So the view that I, I want this to go to is right there. So I have to actually have the camera thing, this guy, open over here so I can click on that because I can't I can't seem to save that view. <laughs> Alright, so we're not going to be able to listen to weather. So it is what it is. Our flight plan is in there. It's ready to go. Make sure our flight director's on. It's going to hit both of them right away. Uh, for our initial altitude, we are looking at top altitude of 3,000 feet. I know that this is a very generic, if you will. This is not how we normally do our checklist. This aircraft is not a full-up aircraft by any means. So 3,000 feet is what we're going to put on here. What did we say our V2 was? It was, was that 191 for V2? What was that, Control 3? 192 is our V2, so we need to go to 197. So let me reset the camera position here. 197 on here. Wow, that went down in tens? Really? That doesn't make sense. Why is it going in tens? Okay, well, I guess it's going to be 200 then. That's kind of dumb. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, what else we got here? Let's uh, let me start taking a look at a checklist here. So the battery switch is on. Hydraulic panel is set. Uh, C1 and C2. So I didn't turn any switches off or anything like that. I left everything uh, in its auto or whatever. So like on your hydraulics, it says that these are off. I left them on the auto position. That's where they were when I loaded in the aircraft. All I did was turn the power on. I turned the battery on the aircraft. So I'm going to leave that as is. The wiper selectors are all off. Uh, nav light switch should be on. There we go, nav lights on. And I do have a few uh, switches uh, tuned in here, like landing lights. Uh, and then the only other one that works is the strobe light. I can't get any of the others to, to work. So I got a couple switches that are working, though, so that's nice. Uh, let's see, so nav lights on. We don't need the logo lights right now. Um, alternate flap arm switch is off. That's going to be uh, down here, right there. And it is. Uh, and then the selector is off as well. So it, it's actually missing something here. There's supposed to, if I remember correctly, there's a button right here in our 787 from Quality Wings. Anyway, park and brake set, which it is. That takes care of that one there. Uh, we are on external power right now. It was just automatically there. I didn't do anything to get external power. So, and we're not going to fire up the uh, APU yet. So that's basically our cockpit acceptance right there. All right, so it was our cockpit acceptance slash FMC flight planning and all that. And again, uh, there's so many things that don't function in this aircraft that it's just it's actually kind of frustrating because I've gotten so used to aircraft that you know everything works the way it's supposed to, right? So um, it is nice to have these um, the little cockpit tooltips. They're quite large. I don't think they get smaller. I think I have them set at their smallest. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's press on with uh, our initial pre-flight here. IRS selectors, those are already on. We've taken care of that. Uh, the CDU has been taken care of. Uh, circuit breakers, I'm sure they're not going to work in this thing. Um, we've got uh, the ICA set up the way we want it right now. Up here on the overhead panel, uh, the flight control services. Uh, we got 
primary flight computers. Uh, I, I, I just I hate that I can't get a better view. It's so frustrating. All right, let's zoom down a little bit so we can see as much as possible. All right, flight control surfaces, those are guarded and closed. You can't do anything with them anyway. Uh, you can't test the battery. You can't do the emergency lights. Uh, you can't do the service interphone. You can't do the PAX oxygen. Uh, start selectors are one of the few things you can mess with. The APU, primary flight computers, you can't do anything with that. You can't even move the IRS selectors. See, it, it says inoperable. So lots and lots of inoperable things. It's a default aircraft. It shouldn't be of any real surprise to us. So battery switch is on. IFE passenger power switch is off. Um, where is it? Uh, they're talking about the service interphone. Or, no, they can't be. Where is the IFE passenger power switch on this one? I don't even think it has it. I don't know where it's supposed to be, so we're going to move on. Passenger signs are set to auto. You can't adjust those either. Uh, you can set the wing NAIs to auto. Uh, come on, there we go, to auto. What else? Can, what can we actually do on here? Those are armed. That's on discharge. Those are normal. We can move the start selectors. Uh, looks like you can jettison fuel, maybe. You can open it. I don't know if you can actually do it. You can turn the fuel pumps on, obviously. Uh, these guys are inoperable, so we can't do anything with the electric hydraulics anyway. Uh, no humidifiers. Oh my goodness, you can't hardly do anything with this, right? Uh, can't turn the wipers on, can't use the washer, can't change the HUD. I don't even think it had, I don't even think it actually had, well, it does have a HUD. I haven't looked to see if you can use it. I haven't tried, but. So, for the most part, our overhead panel is set up. <laughs> I mean, you just, it's, it's, it's a default aircraft. I'm not really complaining. It's a default aircraft. What do we expect? This is what you get with a default aircraft. Now, to be fair, it is a little better than most default aircraft, um, but it's still a default aircraft. So we get what we get with this. Um, another thing you'll notice on here is none of these really work on here. So uh, let me zoom over there real quick. Well, that's as far over as I can go, apparently. So you don't, no status. No electrics, no hydraulics. You get fuel, no air, no doors, none of this. None of this works. All right. So the only thing you get on here is fuel. Um, you can uh, get the rest of your engine status on this guy down here. Just click on your engine there. Uh, I don't know if it does weather and terrain or traffic. I haven't tried yet. Uh, we'll find out once we're airborne. I do know that as of right now I have no way to do playback or record quality external views so there will not be any elevator music for this video which is unfortunate uh, but it is what it is. Do we get the vertical? To no we don't. We don't get that either. Uh, traffic it supposedly shows up. Will the weather show up? I don't know. We'll see. Terrain maybe. We'll see. Again I don't know. I do like the view you get here. It's basically a satellite image of uh, the ground looking down on top of your aircraft. It is off a little bit. The nose of the aircraft is actually a little further up than what it shows on here. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, but that is unfortunately but essentially our uh, initial pre-flight checklist. Alrighty, so we're just about ready to push and start here at night. <laughs> I don't like using default aircraft. I actually, believe it or not, I'm missing having my procedures to do right now because I just feel like I'm stumbling around and just completely lost. It's, it's a mess. Let's put that on nav display over there. Um, the first thing I want to do here, I want to get the APU started up. Now, this has been one of those things that's frustrated me. So on and then start. I have no way of knowing when the APU is running. There's nothing on here that tells me the APU is running. Nothing. And I don't have the status page, so I can't look at look on there to see if it's running. A little bit frustrating, but it is what it is. With that in mind, let's take a look at our uh, taxi and departure here. All right, we're going to be taking runway 28 right today. The only reason I'm taking that runway is because that's the one that the FSX flight flight planner put me on. Uh, so I'm assuming that's what's being used right now in the sim for AI traffic. So I'm just going to go with it. Uh, ATIS, we've already tried that. It's not working. I don't know what the deal is with uh, the ATC. I can't get it to work. Maybe there's a setting that I missed somewhere. Um, I'll show you something real quick that makes me think that I have it turned off and just didn't realize it. But we'll do that here in a sec. Uh, but ground would be 21.8, tower on 20.5, excuse me. 
and then uh, 120.9 for departure for us. We are right about here. So when we push back, we're going to take Alpha down here until it transitions into Foxtrot. That's this area right here. So we just, that's kind of crazy how it goes through there. But then we're going to cross over uh, one left, 19 right, and then one right, 19 left on Foxtrot. And then we're going to come all the way down. We're going to either use November or Papa. It doesn't matter. But we're going to do our crossover here and then come up here and hold short of runway 28 right over here. Pretty straightforward stuff. Let's take a look at the departure briefing. So you can see it's uh, out to King, Carlos, then Santana. And then for us, it's out to Orca from there with a top altitude of 3,000 feet. NorCal departure on 120.9. Transition altitude is 18,000 feet. And uh, we will take a look here real quick, make sure that this is in the sim. Um, just make sure those waypoints are there. I, I'm not even sure they are. So, uh, But that is your taxi and departure briefing. All right, so just taking a look at our legs page here real quick, you can see that King, Carlos, and Santana are all in there, and then it's off to Orca. So, Orca. so we're good to go on that. Go back to our initial reference and takeoff page. And uh, we'll leave those there. Let me reset the view here real quick. And then now we're going to fly more from, it's probably going to be like this view here. <laughs> uh, but once we turn track IR on, we'll do that. Now, just so you know, track IR is compatible at launch, which is fantastic. I do appreciate that very much. And I do want to show you up here. If you go to settings, it doesn't let me turn the ATC panel on. So I think I have ATC turned off somewhere else, but unfortunately, I can't figure out where. Now, if you go into these settings here, uh, I've set the controls on it, right? Uh, so I set the control, uh, uh, a key to pull up the ATC panel uh, by using this. And, and we'll go over this when the time comes. Right now is not the time. There's too much going on there. But under general settings, there's nothing here for ATC as far as I can tell. It's certainly not under miscellaneous um, accessibility. It's not going to be under here. Minimum text size is 18. See, that's bigger. I don't want it bigger. I want, I want it smaller. <laughs> Uh, menu animations are on, uh, controller vibration, tooltips are off. Uh, I don't know. So anyway, uh, this is data for your scenery and all of that stuff. Traffic, you can see I've got real-time online traffic on. Uh, airport life, you can increase the density. I'm just leaving all that as is from right, for right now. Cameras don't even get me started. It's just the camera doesn't make it doesn't make any sense to me. So I don't know what the deal is with ATC. Uh, no, we just wanted we didn't make any changes. So discard and resume. Uh, so it is what it is. Now uh, you can see an aircraft coming in there. That's kind of cool. Uh, so let's go. What is it? It's Shift E. That should have closed the door. It, it did because you can see the uh, the doors closed now or no it's reopening shift E1 uh, 2 come on you're killing me here which one is it I'm going through them one at a time Now I can't close the frickin' door. Shift plus E, one. Close the door. This is killing me here, you guys. It's absolutely frickin' driving me insane. Shift plus E, plus two, three, four, five, etc. That's what it says. Or you can control the jetway, supposedly, by just holding control and J. I'm holding control J right now, it's not doing anything. Control J that way. Nothing. Shift E2. Nothing. I can't I can't get the stupid door to close now. Oh it's, stuff like this is just obnoxiously frustrating to me because I should be able to just do it. And here's the thing, when you go into your control settings, you can't even find doors. You can't even find doors. It's it's absolutely freaking obnoxious. I don't know why this isn't closing. So I'm going to break away for a minute, figure out how to close this stupid door, 
and then we'll be on our way. Okay, well I guess let the madness continue. I have no idea how I got the door to close finally. And then the tug's pushing into place on its own. Like, I didn't do anything to do that. Uh, I really don't. Like, it's, it's pushing the airplane back. I didn't even order a pushback. The brakes are on, for goodness sakes. Okay, let me turn the brakes off here. Uh, we need to go inside. Uh, goodness gracious. I, did, I didn't order a pushback. <sighs> okay. APU is running, I guess. Uh, but apparently we were still on external power. Oh my goodness, it's madness, people. It's absolute freaking madness. Okay, our overhead is set up. It's ready for engine start, except, well, no, the fuel pumps are all on now, too. They turned themselves on. Let's get the beacon on here, and let's go ahead and start uh, one and two. You can start them at the same time. Uh, there's the N2 starting to come up. One and two. It's an auto start. Both of them will start. You can see the uh, the flasher from the tug. Let's zoom this down a little bit because we want to make sure he doesn't push us back too far. Yeah, see, like, he's got us back pretty far already. Where are we? Oh, geez, that moves fast, doesn't it? Uh, we got a little further to go. See how it, lo it looks like it's a little further back to me. Maybe it, maybe I'm wrong on that, but um, I don't know how to control the direction of the tug. <clears throat> I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I have no idea what that is. So we're just going to push back a little further here. I think that's probably good. So it should be the right shift in P, and that should stop the pushback, and it did. So we'll let him get out of the way there. Why is my... Uh, what did I? I must have pushed something. Set the parking brake. Now, I've got that mapped. There it goes. It's very slow to move. It doesn't. It doesn't move in sync with me, and it and I can't get it to go all the way back up. It goes to the arm position every time. Okay. <laughs> We're having a good time here, guys. The flight should be fun. It's it's the procedural stuff that's. It's going to be a learning curve. That's all there is to it. It's a learning curve, right? Let me uh, get my track IR on. Hold on just a sec. Okay. I got the track IR hat on here. Let's go to the external view for a minute. I want to see if he's disconnecting or what's going on there. He doesn't appear to even be disconnecting, does he? We, he can't we can't have him push us back any further because we can't push back into that area so how do I disconnect the tug oh my goodness you guys this is driving me absolutely nuts now watch so let me go in here to controls go to keyboard set this to all and then go let's go tug I can't nothing comes up like <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's try push. What, what is the deal here? I'm having I'm having a really hard time with the with the and again it's the user interface right. So there's toggle push back. Why is that not coming up right? Shift plus P. Well, I already did that. Uh, increase decrease toggle launch tug tug speed. See. Why is tug not coming up when I search tug in here? Tug should come up, right? But it doesn't. Even if I type in exactly what it is, it's not coming up. That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Resume. Shift P. See, he's going to start pushing again. Now shift P again. I need him to disconnect. Maybe if I hit T. Nothing. I hit the number one. The number one made him push back or move away. I, I have no idea why. Let's, you know what? Let's look at that real quick. Let's go to controls. Now, that's one thing you can do. So, if I search by input, let's find the number one on here. Come on. There you go. 
So here's all, so ATC panel choice one. See, here's the problem. I'm supposed to be seeing an ATC panel. That's what's going on right now is they're, they're giving me options to push back or something like that, but I, I can't see the ATC panel. Uh, okay, close that out. Now if I go search ATC, nothing comes up. You're killing me here. Okay, let's do this. Let's collapse all. So radio, comms, let's start there. Com radio, selects the com tuner, transponder. Here's the choices. Display ATC. See, I have it set to this guy right here, to this little sl slash. But it doesn't work, right? Let's let's do this. Let's select an input here. Let's say F8. Uh, let's try. It. It's already used somewhere else. Extend flap, slew pitch down fast. Uh, okay, no, I'm going to stick with that. F8, and I'll show you why. Let me validate that. So F8 should pull up ATC. Now, if I go over here and select input, and I select F8, I can clear out the other stuff, right? So click on that, and clear current input, validate. And it does that to me a lot. Clear current input, validate. Now it goes away, see? And I don't need it on extend flaps. Clear, validate and it went away that time. Okay, so F8 should display the ATC panel, right? Let's apply and save. Give it a second, and then apply and save again because it's a pain in the butt. Now, if I hit F8, there's no ATC panel. Why? I, there's, I've got something, something set wrong here. Uh, see, they can manage the radio, but not. You see where you see where I'm coming from here, guys. I I don't know what setting I'm supposed to have on to see the ATC panel. Let's see if this will ATC nothing. Let's try air. No, no air traffic control. That's for graphics though. Uh, camera it shouldn't be under there. AT no. Let's just go ATC. Let's leave that there. It's not going to be under sound, I'm sure. Uh, that's just audio levels. Traffic, data, flight model, miscellaneous is where I would think it would be, but it's not. Accessibility. I have no idea why I can't see my ATC panel. It's driving me cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs here, guys. Because, you know, you got other aircraft out here, right? So we would want to be talking to ATC because they're talking to these other aircraft. But we can't because I can't pull up my ATC panel and I have no idea why. Let's see, that's nav log, we don't need that. That's objectives, that's travel to, VFR map. This is weather, which should be on live weather, it is. Uh, checklist, basic controls. Yeah, that's just to look at your controls, though. That doesn't do me any good. Cameras. Yeah, I have no idea, guys. And it doesn't let me select it on here. So I really don't know what the deal is with that. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to break away. I'm going to save this flight. Hopefully it saves in this position. Otherwise, I'll get back to this position. I'm going to go back to the main menu and see if I can figure this out. Alrighty, folks. I'm going to give it to you straight. This is day two <laughs> um, the ATC issue has caused me no end of grief so here's the deal with the ATC it's it's actually a critical part of being able to connect jetways uh, do the pushback all of that my ATC is somehow working in the background <clears throat> but I cannot pull up the ATC window and what I should be able to do is I should be able to just click on this guy and then I get another one of these menu options over here it's a little uh, um, control tower 
is what it is. A little picture of a control tower and then that pulls up my ATC window and allows me to pick the different options and so on. Uh, I'm not the only one having a problem. As far as I can tell, I just happen to be the only one having this specific problem. Apparently ATC is like the most difficult issue people are dealing with right now with the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. So, uh, we're, we were pushed back, um, but then when I loaded in that flight, and it did load in, um, the flight plan wasn't in there. And let me tell you, trying to put a flight plan into this FMC is a nightmare. It was ridiculous. First of all, it doesn't take airways. Will not take airways. Second of all, every single time you pick a VOR, it's going to go to an additional page to choose which VOR, which is obnoxious because almost every single one of them was um, the same VOR listed more than once, but you still have to pick it. In itself, doesn't seem like a big deal, but uh, after you go through three, four, five of them, and all of a sudden, there I am, you know, 20 minutes later, and I haven't gotten halfway through the flight plan. <coughs> Plus, all the wind and all that stuff has changed. So we just went ahead as though the flight had been delayed a day. Uh, it, it does happen in the real world sometimes, so that's what we're going with. So as you can see, we're taking off on runway 19 left now. So let me get rid of that real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, let me bring this over here. Let me make sure I got the right one up. Uh, I need to uncheck one of these. You can, I can just bring this over. So we are not flying the Santana 2 departure. We are now flying the City 3 departure. So I've got that up here. It's runway 19 left. It's going to be climb out to 520. Then it's a left turn out here to City. And then on course from there, essentially. <clears throat> and I didn't even look at our transition because it's not on our flight plan. I didn't do a whole new flight plan for this. I did a new flight plan with the flight simulator, but not a new flight plan on, uh, come on, brain function, SimBrief. So SimBrief, I still have the old flight plan. It's fine. It's going to work out fine. I'm not worried about it. But our top level here is flight level 19 or 0, so that's what we're going with here. Uh, and then you can see down here, climb heading 194 to 520 feet. That's what we saw over here. Then a left turn direct to cross city at or above 5,000, which shouldn't be a problem. And then from city on transition, maintain 190. Expect filed altitude 10 minutes after departure. All right. So uh, I'm assuming uh, we were going to Orca initially. We may be going the same way. So it may be, and I'll look at our flight plan here as soon as I'm done with this real quick. And maybe B, C, triple E, and then out to Orca, and then probably on course from there. So let's take a quick look at that. And uh, oh, why are we moving here? I don't have any throttle on. Why is it moving? Holy cow. <laughs> we better set that parking brake, huh? All right, parking brake is set. Real quick look at the flight plan here. Uh, legs. So city, BC, Tripoli, and then Orca, and then on course from there. So, which is what I expected, so not a problem. Back to our takeoff page here, reset position. Again, the cameras are still an issue. Uh, that master caution is just because the parking brake is set. So I've been setting my view right around here and then raising it up a little bit. Um, <laughs> I tried zooming in. If I zoom in just one click, it's way too close. So again, the views views are a bit of an issue here. All right. Uh, so we've got flaps set to 15, and let's take a look at our before takeoff checklist here. Hold on, I got to get to it. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, it it was a real mess. And so when I reloaded it, I didn't load it at a gate. And the reason I didn't load it at a gate is because I didn't want to have run into an issue with pushback again. Right. So not, it's not the end of the world. Uh, as I said before in this video, the sim looks amazing. Okay, when I was just playing around with it, I was able to find my house. I was able to find my old house. I went to the, I went to the little tiny uh, gravel airstrip where I learned to fly in the real world, and it looks very good. It's not completely accurate because it's not one of the, you know, extra done up airports and so on, but it just looks absolutely amazing. There are some issues. Um, with the looks like these right here these lights should not be over here they should all be over here um, these lights should not actually be on the taxiway I've seen that a lot around San Francisco so it's just things like that um, little visual things 
excuse me. Now, with all that being said, though, the visual uh, look is just absolutely stunning. You're going to see when we take off here. It does look very, very realistic. It is the most realistic looking flight simulator that has ever that I've ever seen. It's absolutely stunning. The default aircraft are what you would expect. It's a default aircraft. It's much better than the default aircraft of old, but it's still default. When you're used to when we're used to flying things like the Quality Wing 787, this thing is woefully lacking in comparison. That's just the reality of it. And so we're just going to we're going to suck it up. We're going to get this flight done and I've got all kinds of plans for uh, this flight simulator for now. Uh, for until we get some good quality add-on aircraft. So I've got stuff that we can do and I'm not worried about it. Uh, and so I'm super excited about it. Now another thing that doesn't work, you're going to see the TOGA function doesn't work on this default aircraft. Um, I've got a button map to it, but it just it doesn't work. I can't get it to work. So it is what it is. Let's take a look at our before, that's our before taxi, not our before takeoff. APU is already off. Flaps are already set. The CDU pre-flight is already done. Uh, sta uh, stabilator trim <coughs> is good. You can see that does work over here. I'll zoom in for you. Oh, there we go. So we're in the green there. Um, does it give us? It doesn't say on here, does it? Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say our trim at all. So again, just things like that. Um, I doubt that our trim needs to be 10.4. Uh, our trim probably needs to be closer to like, we'll put it at 8.0. Uh, it does have us on a reduced takeoff, 8.05 will be fine. Uh, reduced thrust takeoff, I, I, I can't even do a reduced thrust. I mean, I could. I could sit there and stare at it and hope to get it just right, but that's just not going to work out really well for us. So I'm not overly concerned about that either. Um, but taking a look at our before takeoff stuff, if we jump back here, um, there is no weather. Transponder, TCAS is set. Transponder code has got 3457. I'm just going to leave that. That's just fine. Uh, so transponder is good to go. Now this knob here doesn't work, so I can't put it to TARA or anything like that. You guys saw earlier that I could not get any frequencies to go in here for some reason. Um, we can try that again really quick. Let's just tr let me just try again. Let's try ATIS on 115. Let's try 118.850. I just want to try. So 118.850. It'd be great if we could pull up the ATIS. Uh, let's put it in the standby. 118.850. Okay, now let's uh, swap them. No? Uh, swap? Invalid entry. <laughs> <laughs> you see where I'm coming from here? It's a little frustrating. Is it in this one? Yeah, it's in this one, so I should be able to hear it. I've got the volume all the way up, but we're still not getting it. So it is what it is. Weather, terrain, uh, vertical display, all of that is is as desired. Uh, weather radar doesn't work. Not really a surprise there. Again, I'm just trying to level out that view a little bit. I've got track IR. We'll turn it on here in a second. Um, I just want our view to be as uh, comfortable as possible where we can see some stuff. See how it's off center just a little bit too? That's. But if I try to slide over, it always goes too far. I can't center it up just right. So it's a little, I don't know. I like that side better anyway. Uh, lights, let's get our lights on here. So if I go up here, actually let's do this. Let's turn the track IR on here. Let's get this view set. There we go. And track are coming on a little jump. There we go. And then uh, landing lights. So I've got a switch for those now. Get out of there. There we go. Landing lights work. Uh, strobe lights I've got a switch for. Taxi lights are not on, as you can see. And my switches don't work for those. But you don't have to have taxi lights on for um, departure. <laughs> You're supposed to have them on for taxi, which we didn't taxi very far. It actually had us on the runway. Let's turn the backlighting on a little bit because it's a little dark. Uh, it had us on the runway. I taxied off and then over here. Uh, this goes in 10 knot increments, so we're set to 160, 19,000 on there. LNAV, VNAV are on. Flight directors are on. Flaps are set to 15. Uh, pushing the brakes uh, does not release the parking brakes, so keep that in mind. 
and uh, let's see if we can get it back on the taxiway here now I can get external views um, I may play around with it and see if I can come up with something uh, good enough for some elevator music I did recently do a survey on the channel there and I asked how many of you like the elevator music and how many of you actually watch it and one of the options on there there was yes I like it and I watch it there was no I don't like it I don't watch it and then there was I have no idea what you're talking about and I was quite surprised to find that between the no I don't like it and the I don't know what you're talking about that's 51 percent of you who responded to that survey so the question is is the elevator music even worth the time because if you're not watching it then what's the point notice how the runway is not flat I love that that's a huge feature there's this little bit of choppiness in here and I have that today I have no idea why um, I did connect, uh, Sim Toolkit Pro does connect to this flight simulator already, which is fantastic. Come on, a little, little thrust there. Uh, so, is the thrust coming up or what? Goodness gracious, it doesn't like that turn at all, does it? Come on. Anyway, um, so... I guess it's not that big of a deal obviously some of you do like it which I appreciate that I like it so I'm gonna keep doing it but figuring out how to do it with this sim is gonna be its own little thing so the shadows look pretty good again i my settings are set to high which is which means almost everything is set on high nothing really is set on ultra I did make an adjustment to some of the settings you can customize of course um, Come on, brakes. There we go. Boy, the brakes just suddenly click in. The control settings are terrible. They are absolutely atrocious on on this sim right now. Just so you know, the default control settings are horrible. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you're going to struggle with your control settings. Hopefully that's something they'll fix, but FSU IPC7 is supposed to be coming out in the not too distant future, and I'm sure that will do a much better job. All right, enough talky talk. Let's get this bird in the air. So bring in a little thrust here. Release the brakes. And I'm going to hit the toga. It doesn't do anything. In fact, the auto throttles don't even do anything until you're airborne. All right. And I don't think we get V1 call outs and all that. I'm not quite full thrust uh, because the throttles won't map to full thrust. Oh, and the callouts are very, very, very quiet. All right, there's our V speeds. Notice how we're going up and down on the runway. That is the way the runway is. It's, uh, it's rotating on its own. So there we go. All right, positive rate of climb. Let's get the gear coming up. There we go. Now just look at the sim here. I'm going to just stop talking. I just want you to look. And we got a little bit of choppiness, which I didn't have before. But just look at it. Look at what it's doing, it's sliding. That's because I don't have enough rudder in there. You have to actually use the rudder. Come on, nose, get down. Oh, turning a little steep there too. Come on. See it's sliding? That's what happens when you don't have enough rudder in there. I'm trying to get enough in there, but there you go. Now you see the nose is starting to come around instead of slide. That's what we want. Okay, I'm going to bring the autopilot on early. Or not. That's because I had rudder in. There we go. Now I let go of it. Alright. 
Let it do its thing for a second here. All right, let's bring up a setting of flaps. Now again, I've got a little choppiness right now, which I didn't have yesterday, so I'm not sure what that's all about, but just look at it. Even with that tiny bit of choppiness, I mean, it's it's minimal. What the heck? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Come on. Oh my goodness. Flaps all the way up. It's on auto throttle now, just so you know. It's doing that on its own. It's just staying absolutely max freaking thrust. Oh my goodness. Again, default aircraft, but just look at this beautiful flight simulator. It's absolutely freaking gorgeous. Look how real it looks. Look at this. I wish the choppiness wasn't there. I don't know what that's all about. I don't know. My computer should have no problem running this. It really shouldn't. And this thing climbs like a rocket ship, doesn't it? Look at that. And it doesn't look like that flat satellite imagery you get in some of the older sims, right? Oh, yeah. This thing looks beautiful, you guys. Let me see if I can give you that. I mean, it really does look absolutely amazing. So that's that's the biggest takeaway right now from this flight sim is that it just looks so freaking gorgeous. It really does. And it's very impressive. And I can't wait until we have some better quality uh, aircraft to fly in this thing. But for like VFR stuff, it's already, I mean, if you love VFR flying, Oh, you're in there, guys. VFR flying is amazing in this thing, and we are going to be doing quite a bit of it. So look forward to that. Uh, there are other... Oh, we got some floaters out there or something. What is that? See the dark spots there? That's interesting. And, of course, as you see, we get a little higher, and it starts to smooth out, which is nice. And, again, I'm not sure what my frame rate issue is right now. You know how it is. You restart a computer, and everything changes, which is always a little frustrating. So... But we're coming up on 10,000 feet here. Let's go ahead and get those landing lights off. So I got them on a switch, which is nice. There we go. Landing lights are off. We are airborne. Let's take a look at our after takeoff checklist. Gear is up. Flaps are not quite all the way up yet. That's it. Just overspeed. It did a little overspeed again. Now the flaps are up. Boy, they took a while to get up, didn't they? I thought maybe that was me, but it wasn't. Look, it's descending right now to pick up speed. Okay, that's obviously again default aircraft. You got to you almost got to say what do you expect? All right. So now it's sort of doing the porpoise thing. It's starting to climb again and it doesn't know what it wants to do. Look at that. Look at that rate of climb, you guys. Oh my goodness, that's insane. Okay, let me get track iron off here. A little jump here, maybe. Maybe not. No jump at all. It doesn't snap back to position. Let's jump outside the aircraft real quick. Might get a little loud here. Maybe a little loud, but not too bad. Look at this sim. Other than the little porpoise effect there, it's amazing. Alrighty, guys. Gears up. Flaps are up. After takeoff checklist complete. I will look at maybe doing some elevator music. I'm probably going to do something. And I will see you guys when we're getting near top of the sim.
Alrighty, folks, we are somewhere in the vicinity of a top of descent. It's really hard to say because this piece of junk airplane doesn't give me, at least as far as I can tell, it doesn't give me a top of descent. Um, <laughs> this has been a long one. Notice how we're turning back and forth, back and forth, flying that lovely little S pattern because the aircraft does not fly the LNAV properly. Because apparently it was too much effort to spend a little time testing the airliners and the functions of the airliners when they did beta testing in the sim. Big surprise there. I, yeah, I don't even know what else to say. <laughs> you know, again, the sim looks beautiful. This airplane is garbage. It's trash. I'm telling you right now. It's absolute freaking trash. And, I, you know, I knew it would be. I did. I did not buy the super duper deluxe premium version for the additional airplanes. I bought it for the additional airports. And uh, I look forward to when somebody releases some proper aircraft for this sim because really it's just terrible. The wind never changes. Uh, it's been at our back no matter which direction we're flying. Uh, it's been directly behind us at three knots the entire time. I'm pretty sure that's not live weather. I have no idea what the altimeter setting is at uh, EGLL. I don't know which way the wind's blowing because I can't pull an ATIS. Um, I could pull it from Sim Toolkit Pro, but I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be the same. So, <laughs> yeah, all in all, um, as far as the flight experience is, is concerned in this 787, it's, it's junk. It's trash. It really is. It's garbage. This is what you expect from a freeware aircraft. It has a couple more functions than the freeware aircraft of old. I'll give it that. Uh, but not enough to really matter. I mean, you can't even use, you, you really can't use this thing. You can't change a waypoint. You can't remove a waypoint. You can't change, um, you, like, you can't change your altitudes and stuff, right? So it's showing this step climb up to 41,000. It'll probably climb on its own uh, without me changing the altitude. Uh, even though there's no auto step climb feature as far as I know, but it'll climb anyway. And then you see here at DTY, it shows flight level 1 and 310 knots. Okay, what is flight level 1, first of all? <laughs> is that 1,000 feet? Shouldn't that be zero one? one And that wouldn't be a flight level anyway because the, uh, what is the transition altitude? Uh, let me find it. It's like 5,000 feet at London. It's not on the chart I happen to be looking at, but anyway, um, so I can't change anything on there. And then, so I've, I've got our arrival and our approach in there. I don't know if this is supposed to be a hold and then descend in the hold, but apparently we're not supposed to actually be moving. I think we're supposed to be hovering at 7,000 feet, and then we'll just go ahead and we'll kick on those jets, you know, because we have a, a the Harrier version of the 787, right? And I can't change those. You can't do anything. Well, you can't even use this guy over here. Look, you can't. I'm clicking on these. You can't even use this side. So, on the one hand, they tried a little, but they didn't really try. And I think that's what irritates me about it. They didn't really try. They made it look like they tried by doing a couple of little things, and then that was it, right? So I don't even know if we can. I don't know if the nav radio is going to work properly. Um, it's 109.5 let me see if that's the right frequency over here or not because apparently nothing wants to work now 109.5 is the proper frequency so that's good at least we got something there all in all absolutely 100 percent unimpressed with this 787 and honestly it just feels like you know, because they used it as a selling point, right? I think, you know, that's part of why it irritates me. They used it as a selling point. Hey, you can get the 787. Even though it's garbage, you can get it. It looks nice. I'll give them that. It looks really nice. Good job on the on the detail as far as how it looks. But overall, uh, if you have any intentions of buying this sim, look, it's just back and forth. Watch, watch what it does. It should start turning right now. Instead, it's still turning left. Still turning left still turning left wait for it wait for it. oh 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 we crossed the line oh now we got to go back the other way this has been the entire 4,000 mile trip it's stupid and the fact that you can't change waypoints you can't remove waypoints you can't you can't do anything with the FMC which is really frustrating and obnoxious uh, yeah it's just like there's your plan mode it doesn't even show you where you're going you can't step through it 
Um, well, you, maybe you can. I didn't try to step through it, to be honest with you. Let's go to the legs. Can you step? Let's see. Can we step? Oh, we can. But it started all the way back at the beginning. Like, uh, anyway. Okay, so let me just step through real quick here. Yeah, I, I don't know what it's doing. Because right now, right now, where it's at on here, that should be the runway. <laughs> you see that? Here, I'll, let me jump down there and show you. So the waypoint we're on, that's one of the, <laughs> that's that's for the runway, people. That's for the runway. That's the glide slope intercept point. Or no, this one is. But either way, it doesn't matter. It's for the runway. <laughs> it's not for this. Oh, hold on, i got to click on this thing to get the camera back where it was. It's It's not... It's showing this as the waypoint right now. Like, what it, What the heck is that? Yeah, and then it's back to the beginning. See? So I can't even look at... I can't step through the, the rest of the waypoints. It's just... Yeah. You get where I'm going with this. It's trash. It's junk. Uh, as far as I know, there's no top of descent. It's hard to say. I've tried to increase the range as far as it'll go. It won't go any further. I don't know if it shows the top of descent point or not. Here's the deal. I calculated the top of the descent point, which would be at about 115 nautical miles, but I don't have anything that tells me when we're 115 nautical miles from the airfield. But let me show you what I'm talking about. First of all, these all just show the distance from the start to this waypoint. That's a waste of time. Progress page, there it is, progress. You can't go to next page. There is no next page. That's our progress. Our progress is nothing, apparently. I know I shouldn't be so frustrated with this retarded freaking aircraft. I really shouldn't be because it's default aircraft. Well, what do you expect with a default aircraft? It's junk, right? So we have to wait for good aircraft. It's okay. The sim still looks amazing. That's nice and I'm happy for that. I really am. It's going to be great for the series that I'm working on right now that's going to take full advantage of the amazing scenery in this flight simulator. It looks great, but it flies like crap as far as the airliners are concerned. <laughs> I haven't tried any of the others, to be honest with you. I don't know. Maybe the others are a little better. But here we are. So, <laughs> enough complaining. There is currently a uh, running tally going on how many rants and complaints I'll have. I don't know how many that is right now. That should be like four by now. I think that's number four. I'd have to go back and listen to all the video clips. Doesn't matter. Uh, we still need to take care of our arrival and our approach briefing. That's going to be lots of fun, too. Uh, and let me show you why. So here we go, Sim Toolkit Pro. Uh, all of our waypoints that we're flying aren't anywhere on here. Uh, they don't seem to exist in the database except in the new flight simulator, which is interesting. But it is what it is. Uh, what we do have is we have DTY, WCO, and BOVA down here. And that's going to work out nicely for us, but our waypoint... <coughs> Uh, coughing in your face. Hold on, I need a drink. Ah, yeah, there it is. Our waypoint after BOVA is big, which I'm assuming is uh, a VOR, but it's not on here. Um, I haven't tried overlaying this on the... Let's overlay this. Uh, okay, so see our route takes us down here. So that's where big's going to be. It's going to be down here, I, I'm assuming. I, I don't freaking know. Anyway, that's not going to work either. <laughs> oh, you're killing me here. That's right. So it's going to be to Bova, then to Big, whatever. Uh, two seven left is going to be uh, the lower runway down here, um, and uh, we'll just we'll see how it works. I have a feeling we're going to have to probably hand fly this, and it's probably going to be one of the ugliest landings I've ever had, or maybe it'll be one of the smoothest. I don't know. We're going to find out when the time comes. Um, I, I'm just this. Uh, I don't even know what to say. It's just, it's ridiculous. They put an amazing effort into uh, what this sim looks like, uh, but it's like they just didn't bother with these airplanes. They're like, oh yeah, we're going to give you these airplanes. Yay, look at this. Ah. And then they pretended to make it look like there was something more there. But anyway, it's on to Bova, then to Big from there, wherever that is. Uh, I couldn't find Big on here either. This is our approach. Uh, it's going to be the ILS 27 left approach. It's about the only thing that will be semi-normal. Uh, assuming that we can get from big over on to uh, the final approach course without too much issue here. Let's take a look at our briefing strip. For some reason, this thing is, is acting up right now. I don't know why. 8 is 113.750. Uh, That'll be fine. We can't tune anything anyway. 
Uh, Heath Row Director or Approach on 19.730. Tower on 18.505. Ground on 21.905. Localizer Frequency is 109.50 with a final approach course of 270 degrees. Clyde Slope Intercept at 4 nautical miles from ILL at 1400 feet. Uh, let's see. Minimums are going to be down below. We'll take a look. Airport elevation is 83 feet. The runway should be at 77 feet. Now, this should actually matter in this simulator, and I'm excited to see if it does or not. Transition altitude 6,000 feet. I don't know if our uh, altimeter will be correct since I can't get a proper uh, ATIS right now, but runway should be at 77 feet, even though the airport, uh, the center of the airport, or the highest point of the airport. What was it? I did this recently. So this is the highest point of the airport, 83 feet, and then this is the highest part of the usable portion of the runway is 77 feet. So it could be a little lower, could be a little higher. That's my understanding, I think. I have to go back and look at my own tutorial. Anyway, missed approach. Climb straight ahead when passing 1,080 feet or as you're crossing over the ILLVOR, uh, whichever is later. Make a climbing left turn on track 147 to 2,000 feet when passing 6 nautical miles from the London VOR. Uh, climb without delay to 3,000 then is directed. All right. And then you can see how it looks here. So 270, this is 7.5, 4.0, and then on in from there. And then if we look at our uh, profile view here, you can see 2,500 is where we're supposed to be here. Uh, and then we're supposed to be, this is supposed to be intercept here and then on in from there. Pappy lights should be on the left hand side. This is one of the airports that's supposed to be done up properly. I forget what term they use but you know what I'm saying. They supposedly did a really good job with it. So I just broke my pen. Uh, we should have Pappy lights on the left hand side with uh, high intensity approach lighting system number two. I talk about that in a tutorial. You'll see it here coming up pretty soon. Uh, all of that stuff's going to be there. Anyway there's our missed approach stuff and then it should be should be a cat one ILS let me show you something here so there's the weather in the area it's not it it's there's weather around but it's not doesn't look like uh, we're gonna get hit too hard down there if I uh, take this why is this thing being so stinking slow right now Wow anyway uh, yeah, so a little bit of weather in the area, so there's a possibility of it being higher than a Cat 1. Um, but we're going to assume Cat 1 for now, minimum should be at 200 feet. Um, and then if it moves up to Cat 2, then um, you can have minimums at 100 feet. So that's really the gist of it there. So that's our arrival and approach briefings. Now, as far as preparing for the descent, uh, we can take this down to seven, six thousand right now. Oh, I did learn one thing they actually did kind of cool. If you scroll it on the back part, it goes in thousand foot increments. Congratulations, Microsoft. You did one thing that makes it a little easier. Uh, six thousand. I'm going to put it at six thousand for now. <coughs> why are both autopilots not automatically on? Maybe that's why it can't fly that track. You think that's a possibility? I doubt that's it. I really do. I doubt that's it. But I got both autopilots on now. Let's just see if maybe it manages to fly this track properly now. I'm not holding my breath on it. So we got it to 6,000 feet. It will not start to descend on its own. Or maybe it will. I don't know. I see a little green thing there. Is it possible that it's got a... No, because it's got a little green marker for every waypoint. So that's just going to be the next waypoint there. So quite frankly, I'm going to have to guess as far as uh, <clears throat> a top of descent is concerned. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to have to use my, uh, my map over here on Sim Toolkit Pro, which seems to be having a hard time right now <clears throat> and let's see I think I could put a line in here or not oh there we go all right <clears throat> right now we're 601 nautical miles out so that's a little further than we need to be um, <clears throat> so let me do this I'm gonna draw a line on this map as silly as it is maybe Come on. Here we go. 
And let's see, it's 205. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> For crying out loud, I can't even talk. Uh, 161. And I'm going to start right about there. So I'm just going to leave that line on my map. That's what I'm going to do. And hopefully that point will uh, will give me an idea. I, I don't know what else to do to find the top of the scent. I don't know how far out I am. And since I can't find some of these waypoints uh, on an actual chart, <laughs> which is driving me nuts here. Um, actually, let me try one more thing real quick. Uh, high end route chart. Let's close this out. And where is, you know what, let's do this. Hold on. My, my Navigraph charts is like freezing up. It's absolutely being ridiculous. So where is um, EG529? So this should be right out here. You can't see it. It's me. But, that's, but we've got something else planned for that. There's no EG529. It doesn't exist. It's not a real waypoint. If it is, it's not showing up on my high altitude chart, which is interesting. Um, I don't think it's a real waypoint, to be honest with you. But let me double check. I'm just double checking here. If I can find it, that'd be great. That would help. That would actually help a lot because then I could actually plan a proper descent. Uh, but I'm not finding EG529, you guys. Um, I'm not finding EG anything. There's lots of airways as you come off. Uh, there's some H's. Uh, didn't we just come off an H? What is this thing doing? It's like on its own program over here. Uh, let's see real quick. I don't know if you guys even care about all this. 5915 North. Um, oh, stop. You're killing me here. That's an airspace thing. 5915... Uh, that's 61, 57, I can't even find 59, 15. There's got to be a way to search a waypoint on here, right? Does this show me where I'm at? Could not connect a simulator. Nope, 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 and nope. Okay, let me try one more thing here, and then I'm going to leave you guys alone. <laughs> EG 529. EG 529. Search. Yeah, that just searches for charts anyway. Okay, so there you have it, guys. I don't think that these are actual real waypoints. If they are, I have no idea where it's at. Um, and that obviously is a problem because, well, that just doesn't work properly. So, I don't know. I can tell you this. Uh, unless there is a massive request from you guys to see more of this aircraft... Uh, you won't you won't see this default airplane again or for that matter you probably won't see any default airplane again unless for some reason which I kind of doubt it but if for some reason there's a massive request from you guys then obviously I'll consider it because you know this channel is for you guys it's not for me but the reality is this thing's garbage it's trash it's junk meat as we say in my house and I'm not impressed with it at all so all of that being said, uh, we are going to go ahead and start our, well, we're not going to start our descent here. We're about 600 nautical miles out. we got a little ways to go, uh, but that takes care of all our descent preparations as far as we can do them in this aircraft. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the approach. And I do want to say just real quick, uh, before I sign off uh, from this portion of the video, I like that we're approaching here at night. I want to see what this thing looks like at night. In fact, I did want to show you this. That reminds me. Look outside. I know that's probably a little loud. I'll try and talk a little closer to the microphone here. Look at the stars out here though. Again, visually, this sim is amazing. It's gorgeous. Absolutely just so impressed with the visuals in this sim. The aircraft is junk. That's <laughs> just all there is to it. Um, but we did have a daytime departure from San Francisco. We got a pretty good look at how things look during the day. I want to see how it looks at night. I think you guys probably do too. So it should work out really nicely that um, 
we have a nighttime approach in here. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to finishing up this flight and getting it out to you guys so that you can get a look at what we got going on here. I appreciate all you guys. I'll say it again before the video is done, but um, you guys are fantastic. And I hope that you're enjoying what you're seeing so far. And uh, keep guessing on those rants because I imagine there's more coming. All right, folks, as we continue to meander over the uh, city of London here, you can see we're about to make this big right turn to big, interestingly enough. <laughs> and then it's supposed to go to USR, and then I have no idea what this nonsense is. So I think what's going to happen is from big, we're going to take a heading. We're going to head straight over here to, uh, what is that, uh, ILL-10? Yeah, ILL-10. Should be at, uh, what are we at right now? We're at uh, 6,000. It's really on its own program here. It doesn't, uh, like I've got it set to 2,500. I know it's got 6,000 in there, but I don't know. This thing's just weird. It's really, really weird the way this flight plan's set up like this. So I came out a little early here. I figured, uh, why the heck not? Oh, look, there's an airport underneath us. See the see the airfield there um, I had to bring the textures down just a hair uh, it was uh, it's just a little too much for my system there's a lot going on in London though I mean this is one seriously jam-packed city uh, so that certainly played its part um, but yeah so I thought I'd come on just a little early I may uh, just shut my face here for a minute and then uh, fast forward it a little bit or something like that but uh, we'll be on the approach here shortly either way
All right, so you can see we're almost to big here. Let's go ahead and uh, take a heading here. Let's just go in. Let's just do that. Do that. Go that way. Your L nav feature is atrocious, to say the least. And then uh, let's see if it'll let us select altitude here. It will not. Of course not. Uh, oh, there it is. It's descending. Okay, good. About the only thing left to do is select the speed. If it'll let me. And let's bring the speed down. 200 knots. So if you use the mouse wheel, um, it, it goes in 10 increments of 10. If you use the... Uh, if you click on it with the mouse, it goes in increments of one. Okay. We've done our approach briefing. We've got our landing lights on. This thing is like nose diving at the freaking ground here. Vertical speed. Look at that. 4,400 feet per minute. Are you serious? Why on earth would it descend that fast? No wonder I had to throw out full freaking spoilers. Wow. All right, flaps one coming in. This thing's a nightmare here. Will it take the localizer this far out? I doubt it. Uh, no, it's armed. Okay, we can, uh, let's see here. Oh, come on. Just hold that right there. Just hold that right there. Just stop. It's moving around so much that I can't control the stupid thing. Alright. Oh my goodness. This is just atrocious, you guys. This is atrocious. Alright. Yeah, look, this thing is like, uh, you're descending too fast, you're descending too fast. There is, you can't get uh, an approach uh, speed on here. So, see, it doesn't let you. So, it's probably going to be about 140 knots, and I've had enough of this thing. That's it, we're done. That's it, we're done. That's just, that's just insane. All right. Let's start heading over this way here. We don't need to climb. What on earth are those engines doing? Holy cow. You hear that? My goodness. Okay, can I put this on approach mode? It does not appear that I can. <laughs> That's not really a surprise, I suppose. Um, let's see here. Why are you climbing? Get your nose down. Oh my goodness. Wow. I got too many things going on at once here that I'm trying to figure out because nothing seems to be working properly. Stop climbing. Trim that nose down a little bit if it'll let me. What are we at here? We're at 2800. It's still trying to climb. I don't know why it keeps trying to climb. But I've got the runway in sight. <laughs> okay, seriously, we need to descend. Auto throttle's coming off. I've had it. I've had it with everything having to do with this airplane. Throttle's to zero, both of them. Oh, what are you doing? Jeez. Okay, next setting of flaps coming in. Let's get the gear down. Let's see if the gear actually came down, shall we? Ooh, it did. Look at that. It's a pretty view. All right. Better pay attention to what we're doing here. There's the glide slope. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure the passengers are in the back going, what are you doing? We're way too slow now, of course. Way too slow. Oh, man. This thing is... Whew. This is something else. I'll tell you what. I'm going to trim that nose up a little. Alright. Nope, not that much. Come on. Man, I am just fighting with this thing, you guys. It is something else. We need a lot more thrust, though.
Oh. Now our speed's too fast. No, it's not. It's not fast enough. We're a little below the glide slope here. And we're way too slow. This is going to be one of the worst landings I've ever had. I can tell you that right now. We're getting her there, though. We'll get her there. We'll get her. Why is it climbing? Holy choir. Oh, my goodness. Enough. Next flap setting. Now we're way above the glide slope. Now, supposedly these flight dynamics are supposed to be, like, really close to realistic. I don't know that I buy that. I haven't flown a 787 in the real world. That is for certain. But I have flown in the real world, and I've flown the Cessna on this thing, and I gotta say, it just doesn't seem to match up to me. That's just my opinion. What do I know? There's uh, flaps 35 coming in there. That's what we're gonna land with. I need her to descend just a wee bit quicker, though. A little more. Uh, look how high we are. We're so stinking high. Okay, we're gonna bring that nose over just a little bit. We're going to trade altitude for speed for a minute here. And we got a straight 15 knot tailwind. So that's going to make this lots of fun. We're still going to land it because the weather's supposed to be coming the other direction. I can tell you that for certain. Uh, but I've had a tailwind the whole flight. No matter which direction I was facing, I had a tailwind. Now we're starting to come back to the glide slope here. Come on. It doesn't respond very quickly, I can tell you that. There we go. Still a little high, obviously. This is going to be a very, very fast landing. I need you to come down a little more, baby. Come on. Come on down. Yeah, we're getting some choppiness here. I don't like it at all. I've got, I mean, come on. I've got 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM. I've got an i7-8700K. And I've got an RTX 2070 Super. It shouldn't be choppy, right? Okay, the callouts are really quiet. Let's listen to them and see if I don't crash. Come on. Oh, that floated bad. Come on. A drag in the wing there. Holy cow. No reverse thrust all of a sudden. No reverse thrust. Even though I programmed it, no freaking reverse thrust. Absolute garbage. Trash. Trash, 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 trash. It's freaking trash. $130 of trash right now. Really ticked off. This is just freaking nonsense. Like seriously, that that had to be a wing strike on freaking landing there. It, it just it just dipped to the side all of a sudden. It wasn't even me. It just decides, oh, I'm gonna go this way. What the heck? And every time, <laughs> this is something I hate. I hate when cameras do this. Every time you move the aircraft up or down the view floats a little bit listen that's not realistic your freaking head doesn't float around when you're freaking changing like that it doesn't freaking show a ah oh, you you guys know what i'm talking about you know what i'm you know what i'm talking about it doesn't freaking show anything realistic at all it's absolute freaking trash <sighs> strobe lights off well I'd say freaking look spoilers were armed but look look at this look at this look at this crap spoilers are armed but no they didn't deploy reversers didn't freaking deploy look at that the reversers are supposed to be deployed right now but they're not nope they're not and but but the spoilers want to keep coming up because that makes sense oh I'm freaking Listen, 
the sim I, I I stand by what I said the sim looks gorgeous it does it looks absolutely beautiful these planes uh, you know I flew I'm annoyed I'm annoyed I flew uh, I, I flew around a little bit in the Cessna it seems all right although their idea of freaking torque and p-factor is a little over the top but it seems all right um, and and I tried to, a little bit of uh, like touch and goes in this thing and stuff just to get a feel for it this thing's junk it's freaking garbage it's absolute garbage and I'm looking like a freaking moron trying to freaking come in on approach the sim that's supposed to be absolutely freaking amazing on frame rates and I've got an RTX 2070 super which is a great graphics card and I, I've got a great system here and I've got the systems turned down or the the settings turned down and I'm getting choppiness that's just garbage that's absolute trash and that whole freaking that head float thing that it does oh for the love of God take that away that is the absolute worst thing anybody ever put in a flight simulator listen your body moves but you don't notice that that floating motion you don't notice that in real life it doesn't it, your freaking eyeballs don't work that way people your head doesn't float around if it did you'd have vertigo and you'd freaking crash I gotta figure out how to turn that setting off it makes it so f because here's the thing you have no feel in a sim use your freaking head morons you have no feel so if I can't feel the aircraft pulling up, but my head's, my view is dropping down like this, that's supposed to tell me the aircraft is pulling up? It just makes it look weird, and it confuses your eyes. Like, what's going on? Am I climbing? Am I descending? What's going on here? It's freaking stupid. Who's the moron who came up with that? Who thought that was a good idea? Who said, yeah, let's put this in here. Smack them. Slap them in the freaking face and tell them how stupid they are for putting that in here. That's the worst thing in the world. You can't fly a freaking simulator aircraft like that. It doesn't work, okay? Your eyeballs don't float around in your freaking head when your head moves. Your vision travels with your freaking head, and you don't notice it because in the real world, you have this thing called peripheral vision. Ever heard of it? You know, it's that ability to see a little low. It's, we have a really wide range of vision in the real world. I got this little 2D, two-dimensional view here. I can't see anything. In the real world, I would see, with my head sitting right here in the real world, I would see all the way down to there, all the way up to there, and I would see all the way over to about there, and I would see all the way over to about there, all with just my head sitting right here. That's what peripheral vision is. So when the aircraft makes sudden movements and my body moves with it or moves against it or whatever, my eyeballs don't float around. My peripheral vision knows what's where, and it picks up the difference. Okay, you have to be a freaking idiot to think that my head doing this in the freaking sim every time the airplane moves, like, because that makes perfect sense, right? Stupid, absolutely freaking stupid. Now, there's your best rant for this freaking sim so far. You know what, Microsoft? Here's what I have to say to you you made a sim that looks absolutely beautiful, and you made aircraft that are absolute freaking trash your camera system sucks your airplane is a piece of freaking junk you didn't even try on this thing this thing is trash all right your airplane is junk your cameras are a freaking joke in this freaking thing it, this is an absolute joke the fact that i can't use atc is pathetic and i can't reinstall i can't do a reinstall it doesn't work that way i don't even you can't even find the root folder for this thing i can't find the executable okay and even if I could what difference does it make right ah I'm just stupid stuff like that just boggles my mind who thinks that's who thinks that's a good idea who thought that was a good idea that's just stupid alright and you know what play it for Microsoft let them get butthurt I know when I see something stupid though I call it stupid alright your flight dynamics are not as good as you claim for them to be they're not I promise you that there's no way that aircraft would have been that difficult to freaking land alright and the fact is, is, I can't see what the heck I'm doing anyway because my head's constantly moving around, moving around. What a freaking joke, right? What? Oh, all right. I'm done.
I'm done ranting. I'm going to park this stupid airplane, and I want to be done with this flight. I don't, I don't want to fly this thing again. I pray that you guys don't want me to fly this airplane again because I hate this thing. It's trash. It's absolute freaking garbage. I would rather fly a default plane from FSX than fly this piece of junk right here. All right, I got a couple of legit questions here. First of all, where's the proper freaking dome lighting in here? Like, why can't I turn off those signs? Uh, like, I've got the dome light on, but that's this thing. That's not. That's not the light I'm looking for. Like, you can't. You can't see anything. Well, you got that light back there, I guess. Uh, okay, here's my other question. Why are none of the lights on at this freaking airport? Look at this. All these are all these are off. Why are they off? That seems like some sort of error to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong occasionally. I'm turning uh, ground power on. I'm tired of waiting on the stupid APU because I have no idea if it's ever going to be running or not. Uh, so we got those turned off. Uh, no idea how to get the jetway. Uh, what is it? Shift E plus one. No. Control J. What the heck? All of a sudden I'm getting freaking. Are you kidding me? Ugh. I, I have no idea what I just did. No idea at all. Uh. Three, four, five. That's that's me, by the way. It's that's ATC options. No. Stop. Please stop. So what's going on right now? What you're hearing is you're hearing the ATIS in the background because what's happening is when I'm selecting numbers trying to connect the jetway, the it's selecting things that are on that ATC panel. You know, the panel that I can't pull up because for some stupid reason it's grayed out. Yeah, that one right there. That's why you're hearing that right now. Because it works, but it just won't show up for me for some absolutely freaking stupid reason. Oh my god, I wish he'd shut up. Ugh. Seriously. Enough. So I can't connect the jetway. Uh... No, I didn't hear your last transmission. No, no, I didn't because I can't respond to you. I'm over it. I'm done with it. This has been, this has been, um, let's call it interesting. Let's let's call it interesting. Look at this. All these lights are off. All the terminal lights are off. There's lights on every all over the freaking airfield. Shut your freaking mouth, dude. Anyway, there's. Oh my god. Anyway, there's lights on all over this airport, but for some reason, all of the terminal ramp lights are off. All of them. What the heck is that all about? Shift E, 2, I don't know, 3. I'm over it. I've had it, guys. Uh, <laughs> listen. I don't want to give the impression that I don't like the simulator as far as the visuals are concerned. I love it. It looks amazing. We have waited years to see this kind of visual quality in a flight simulator. No doubt about it. We have waited a long, long time. And the visual quality, as you saw during this flight, is amazing. Uh, the fact that it's getting a little choppy, and I don't know that, you know, uh, Microsoft made a big deal out of, you know, how good it's supposed to run. Why is it getting choppy for me? I've got a really good system, and I don't have it on ultra. I've just got it on high. So I don't think I should be seeing any choppiness. But anyway, apart from that, the visual quality is amazing. It really is. It's absolutely stunning and beautiful, and I love it. I, re I really do. This airplane is the absolute piece of trash, okay? It really is. I mean, you can get a better freaking airplane from just flight, for crying out loud. You know what? You could probably make a better airplane spending 20 minutes freaking doing a couple of things on an SDK if you knew how to do it. I mean, it's just, it, this thing is junk. What were you, what, what went through your heads? 
and the, the cameras for the love of my freaking sanity and the sanity of everybody who will fly this freaking thing please please for the love of all of our sanity just so that we don't want to strangle ourselves get rid of that freaking nonsense or at least make it easier to figure out how to turn it off I'm sure there's a way to turn it off I'm sure there is but come on your head doesn't freaking your eyeballs don't float around inside your dang head when your head moves alright it just makes it so hard to freaking you're already fighting to control an aircraft when you have zero feel and believe me there's a big difference between feeling what the airplane does and trying to figure it out just visually alright now granted, in instrument meteorological conditions, because I know somebody's going to say this, it is possible to think to feel like the aircraft's doing something that it's not. It's absolutely possible. It's something you learn when you take flight lessons in the real world. It's called unusual attitudes. They'll have you cover your eyes. The instructor will put the airplane in a weird mode, and he'll ask you, say, he'll say, what's the airplane doing right now? And you say, I don't know. It's turning to the right. And he'll say, okay, uncover your eyes. You uncover your eyes, and, you know, you're, you're climbing to the left. You know what I mean? Like, it, y your body can lie to you. But when I have peripheral vision... I can see certain things, you know, I can see more than I can on a two-dimensional screen, and my eyeballs don't float around in my head every time the plane moves. So, seriously, it's just stupid. It's absolutely freaking stupid. I think it, it might even be this momentum thing. I bet, I, I don't know. I have no idea what's what. The camera system is just, it's a nightmare. It's terrible. And I'm not, I know I'm not the only one who thinks that. It's an absolute joke. Uh, the flight dynamics, yeah, I don't think they're as good as Microsoft claims, but to be fair, I, I've never flown a 787 in the real world, all right? But I have flown the Cessna in here, a Cessna 172, and I've flown a Cessna in the real world. And I'm going to tell you right now that a Cessna 172, okay, the newer model, the, the Millennium Edition and, and above, which I think has a, a 180 horsepower, it's just below the, whatever the threshold is for high performance. Uh, when you put it on full throttle, it doesn't pull so hard to the freaking left that you need full right rudder to even try to get it to line up on the center of the runway. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't, okay? And there's not so much P factor that it's trying to slam the wing into the freaking ground, but that's what I get on here sometimes. Not every time either. It's inconsistent, all right? And don't tell me it's the wind. I know how to check the wind, okay? It's just, I don't think your flight dynamics are as good as, as the claim says that they are. Uh, I think the, the, the claim that you have for this sim that is spot on is that your visuals are freaking stunning. They absolutely are. I have not seen a visual, uh, a visually appealing simulator like this ever. I don't care how good or how high your settings are on X-Plane, P3D, FSX, whatever. It's never looked this good. And so that I can definitely jump on board with. It's great for VFR flying right now, but until somebody puts together a quality airplane, you guys, listen, <laughs> you saw what this thing did. It's flying S's along the freaking flight path for 4,000 freaking miles. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay, and that's just one of the plethora of issues with this freaking airplane. And it's just stupid. It's absolutely stupid. All right. Uh, in the end, our landing rate was minus 40 feet per minute. That's right. I put it down on the right, on the right side gear. Nice and smooth at minus 40 feet per minute, despite the insanity of my head floating all over the freaking cockpit. All right? So it ended up being a halfway decent landing, but it looked absolutely atrocious. I'm embarrassed by that final approach. Uh, the, just the whole thing was just, it's, it, it's insane to me. I, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't care for that at all. I don't like this airplane. Please, I'm begging you people, don't ask me to fly this thing again. <laughs> Uh, anyway, okay, enough ranting and complaining. There are obviously always going to be issues with any product when it's first released. I don't care how much testing or time they put into it. I don't think they should have released these airplanes like this, but there's always going to be issues with a product on release. Let's be fair about that. Uh, even the best developers out there, their products are going to have issues when you first release them. That's just the reality of things. There's a lot that goes into this. I can't even fathom the amount of coding that goes into this. Okay, so being fair about that, I think, you know, there's going to be some issues, and that's just the way that it is, and that's just what we're going to have to deal with for a little while until things get squared away. However, 
overall I think especially for VFR flying and stuff like that I think that this thing is amazing right now and I think when some of these uh, some of these re uh, more uh, renowned developers put out some quality payware aircraft I think we're gonna have the sim that's gonna take us at least the next 10 years and hopefully we don't have to wait another 15 or however many years it was what was it 16 years between releases yeah, so hopefully we don't have to do that again, but uh, this is definitely going to be the sim of the future, and I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time in it. I hope you guys enjoyed the flight. I know that uh, there were aspects of it that I certainly enjoyed, and I look forward to a lot more flights in this flight sim as we progress forward. And that's it. That's all and no more, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't already done so, please take the opportunity to subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the video. That lets me know that I'm doing a good job. And... Now that's really it, and that's all, and I don't have anything else to say except that until next time, <laughs> as always, keep the blue side up unless otherwise instructed by ATC. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.